Good evening, and welcome to our prayer meeting tonight here at Faith Bible Church of San Francisco. We'll be opening with a hymn, and uh, just share with you uh, the verse from Romans 12, 1 and 2. Um, as the Lord has given us uh, and saved us and gave us his best gift through his son, he, he requires or desires for us to, to be a living sacrifice to him, to surrender our all to him. In Romans 12, 1 and 2, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And we'll be singing, I surrender all, as we surrender to the Lord. It is, as the verse said, it is proving what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And join us in singing, I surrender all.
Meditation from our deacon Sam de la Cruz. His word will be a blessing to us and be upon us tonight, those who are here in the church and for those who are live streaming on our Facebook page. Uh, before we start, shall we look to the Lord in prayer and ask his blessings and uh, he truly worked, especially in me as I gave his word. Dear God, Heavenly Father, we have an awesome God. God that gives us strength. God that loves us so much. Lord, just be with us today and fill us with your spirit. That your words that will come out of my mouth will only those that will give glory to you and that will be a blessing to each one of us. Lord, thank you for giving me the opportunity again tonight to share your goodness and your love. We pray for Pastor Alois as he goes to Daily City for your plan in his life tonight. The blessing be upon him and for those people he is about to talk to. Your power be upon him and to all those people that will be with him. Lord, thank you so much. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Uh, we'll be uh, looking at the uh, book of First Peter, chapter 1, verses 1 to 6. First Peter. Chapter 4, verses 1 to 6, and I'll be reading God's Word through the New Language Translation. He says, so then, means, or therefore, in other translation, since Christ suffered physical pain, you must arm yourselves with the same attitude he had and be ready to suffer for Christ. You have decided to stop sinning, and you won't spend the rest of your life chasing after evil desires. But you will be anxious to do the will of God. You have had enough in the past of the evil things that godless people enjoy, their immorality and lust, their feasting and drunkenness and wild parties and their terrible worship of idols. And of, of course, your former friends are very surprised when you no longer join them in the wicked things they do and say evil things about you. But remember that they will have to face God who will judge everyone, both the living and the dead. 
That's why the good news was preached. Even to those who had died, means those who are martyred. So that although their bodies were punished with death, they could still live in the spirit as God does. God, Lord God bless the reading of Saul's word. I, uh, a meditation is about, I title it, Christ-like living. We know that the book of Peter was written for the believers. Amen. So it says, Christians are followers of Jesus Christ. To be a follower of someone is to pattern your life after him, after Christ. Christ is the ultimate example of how to live a life that is pleasing to God. If we pattern our lives after him, we will please God. Not only that, we will find ourselves accepted into his, his eternal kingdom. To be Christ-like is our goal. But since we are not perfect, we are just human beings, the goal seems to be unattainable or unreachable. But the key is, we are not Christ, but can only hope to be like him. While we cannot achieve perfection, Christ himself does promise to give the power. They, Christ himself gave us the power for living effectively for him. The power that is given to us through the Holy Spirit. And the power of his words that we can live through. It says in Romans 8, 9, But ye are not in the flesh. Since we are believers, we are not in the flesh, living in the flesh. But we are now living in the spirit. If so be that spirit of God dwell in you. If any man have not, have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. simply says that when we accepted Christ as our Savior, He is in spirit indwells us. It is automatic, but to those who don't believe, they don't have the spirit of Christ. They are very far away from the Lord. As Christians, since we are indwelled by the spirit of God, We are to be controlled by the Spirit. The Second Corinthians three eighteen says, "But we all, means Christians, we Christians, with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even by the Spirit of the Lord." I like the way that uh, the New Living Translations uh, done it. It's, uh, it's like it's self-explanatory. It says, and all of us believers have had that veil removed so that we can be mirrors that brightly reflect the glory of the Lord. And the spirit of the Lord works within us we become, we become more and more like him and reflect his glory even more. As Christ's con spirit controls our inner life, we, he also controls our outer expressions of that inner life. Like it says there, when we look at the mirror, we look ourselves in the mirror. What you see is not yourself in the mirror is the reflection of you. It's just an image of us. That is how we should live like Christ. People will see the image of Christ in us if we live a life according to his will. 
if we walk our life and obey his commands, people, unbelievers, will be magnetized because they can see the work of Christ in us. Back to 1 Peter 4. From the verses that we have just read, we just start with therefore or then. It says, therefore, since Christ is the Lord of our life, we must be ready to suffer for like him. Number one is we should be ready to suffer if we have Christ in our life. Following Christ means suffering for his cause. Since Christ suffered physical pain, we must also suffer pain in our lifetime. But Christ suffered more than us. He suffered physically, emotionally, and spiritually. Christ suffered for us because he loves us so much. He loves his own. He loves his own children. Like an earthly father or mother loves his own children. Like he says, John 3.16 says, we can all know this verse. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. John 3.16 is for everyone. Sinners like you and me, and for those who want to believe and accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. <coughs> since we have done that, since we are called the children of God because we accepted him, believe on him, and trust our life in him. We are called the heir, joint heirs. But since we have done and be called to be children of God, we have to suffer for the sake of the gospel, for the sake of the medicine that cures human sins, human sickness. We should not only be a bystander, but be a worker of Christ. We should be ready and able to suffer for the sake of the gospel. It says, uh, Romans 8, 17, to, chapter 8, 17 to 18 says, and if children then heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified. And 18, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. We are children of God. We are heirs, co-heirs, joint heirs with Christ. As joint heir, we should also suffer for him for the sake of the gospel. Not only that, that we may be glorified with him in heaven. Our eternal hope is to be with him. It's not about heaven. It's about Christ. We will be with him forever. And he has done everything for us. He suffered for us. See, he was right there in the throne of glory. He came down, he humbled himself so we could be saved and to be with him in paradise. Suffering for the Lord's sake brings tremendous joy. 
It will not only bring joy to our life, but joy to the Father who is awaiting us. Psalms 126 says, verses 5 to 6, They that saw tears shall reap in joy. If there is pain, there is joy. If we suffer for Christ. He that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his ships with him. We recognize the suffering is not forever, it says right here. It is only a part of what we will enjoy in heaven. It is a small thing to suffer here on earth compared to what we will be doing, we will be having in heaven with the Lord. Suffering becomes joy when the seed that was been planted, the seed that we have planted to the, unsa to the unsaved, the gospel that they have shared, the soul that we have brought to Christ, everyone, the angels will be rejoicing there if we bring one soul for Christ. Suffering becomes joy when we, the seed that has been planted is ready for harvest and laid on Christ's feet. Not only we have to suffer for Christ, it also says from our passage that since we are children of God, we should. You have decided to stop sinning and you won't spend the rest of your life chasing evil desires. Since we have been transformed, we accepted Christ as our Lord and Savior. We don't have to look back on the sins that we have committed. We don't have to look back and chase those evil desires that is in our, in our hearts before. Yes, we are sinful men. We are still in the flesh. But God is able and ready to forgive us if we confess our sins to him. We have and a forgiving God, a loving God, and always patient with us. That's why he has, not had, he has not yet come. He wants everyone to be saved. Amen. He wants every one of our relatives, our friends, our co-workers to be saved. But to enable them to, so we can bring them to Christ as we work, let the life of Christ shine in our, in our being and the way we talk, the way we work, the way we walk in our, our life. We should be the image of Christ like, not the sinfulness of this world. says here, you have decided to stop sinning. You won't spend the, race, the rest of our life chasing evil desires. The decision of accepting Christ into our life means renewal of vows. Like when we're getting married. Once you get married, there'll be two of you. That vow is a promise not only to each other, but a promise to God. Because pride, uh, marriage is a holy matrimony. It's not only by papers. Our allegiance to Christ, I said, and we are renewed being, renewed every day. 
Second Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if any man is in Christ, he is a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, all things are become new. We become a new man. If we accepted Christ as our Savior, a new creature, we have a vital union with the risen Lord. A glorified Lord. He gave us a new creation, a new being. Isn't that exciting? Amen. That the life, while we're still here in earth, we're enjoying already the privileges that God has given to us, the blessings, our work, our family, especially. Not only our family, but a church family. Amen. We are a new creation. So that's why we have to get rid of the sins that enfold us before we accepted Christ. Galatians 5.24 says, Those who belong to Christ Jesus have nailed the passions and desires of their sinful nature to the cross and crucified them there. See that? Galatians 5. Very clear. When we accepted Christ, all our passions, all our evil desires have been nailed on the cross. It's been crucified with Christ right there. And 25 says, if we are living now by the Holy Spirit, let us follow the leading of the Holy Spirit in every part of our life. Since we are children of God and the Holy Spirit indwells us, let us follow what is the leading of the Holy Spirit in our life. Every step that we make in and out the church, in and out of our house, it is very important. How could we live according to the, to the work of the Holy Spirit? How could we grow in the grow, in the leading of the Holy Spirit if we don't communicate with the Lord, if we don't spend time with Him, if we don't talk about him in the church, in our home, especially with, like my children and my grandkids. As, I, as my grandkids are growing up, they should know that there is a God. That I keep on praying for them, especially those who are far away from, the, from their parents that they won't forget that there is, we have a God that is protecting them and giving them the knowledge. So we have to mature in our Christian life so we can live far from the sinful nature of this world. Following Christ means suffering for his cause. I said, following Christ means chain of sin is broken. And following Christ means to do his will. As Christians, God has a plan for each one of us. A plan for us to prosper plan for us to succeed and a plan for, him, for us to follow him. Philippians 2.13 says, For God is working in you, giving you desire to obey him 
and the power to do what he pleases. Let us follow what the Lord is leading us. You know the will of God in your life. God has a plan for each one of us. And the Lord has given us, each one of us, the gift how we could serve him. And we have through that, we have to follow his will. And Acts 21, 14b says, let the will of the Lord be done. Be done in our life. My ultimate question is, what is the ultimate will of God? What is the, his very purpose of why he died on the cross? What is the ultimate will of God in our life? It says uh, Mark 16, 15 to 16, says, uh, And then he told them, Go into the world and preach the, God, the good news to everyone. Everywhere, anyone who believes and is baptized will be saved. But anyone who refuses to believe will be condemned. That is the will of the Father. Let us share his word. Preach into all the world the gospel of salvation. The good news that everyone will believe. Hear the gospel and believe, and you will be saved. It says as well in, in Second Corinthians five. Eighteen to twenty-one. I'll be reading. All this newness of life is from God, who brought us back to Himself to what Christ did. We were brought back to Christ of what God has done. Christ has done. He died on the cross, and we accepted Him as our Lord and Savior. And God has given us the task of reconciling people to Him. For God was in Christ, reconciling the world to him, no longer counting people's sin against them. This is the wonderful message just given to tell us to tell others. That is our obligation. That is our duty, our responsibility. Session 20, we are Christ's ambassador. As believers, we are ambassador of Christ. And God is choosing each one of us. And God is choosing us to speak to you. For speak to those who are, who are unbelievers. We urge you, as though Christ himself were here, pleading with you, be reconciled to God. For God made Christ, who never sinned, to be the offering for our sin that we could be made right with God to Christ Jesus. T. To preach the good news, we have the responsibility as an ambassador of Christ. We are the one to be sharing the good news of salvation. God is using us. And let us have the will, the enjoyment to share the gospel in the small things by the way we speak or the way we talk or the way we walk our life. Walking, the way you act is the best example. We are ambassadors for Christ. And that is our main duty as a Christian. We have the medicine that will cure the sin, our sinfulness. 
I'll be ending with the uh, Second Timothy chapter 2, 8 to 13. And by this I will end. Never forget that Jesus Christ was a man born into King David's family and that he was raised from the dead. This is the good news, the gospel I preach. Because I preach this good news, I am suffering and have been chained like a criminal. That is, Paul is speaking. He was, he's suffering. He suffered for Christ's sake to spread the gospel. He was chained, but the word of God cannot be chained. Whatever you do, the word of God will come out. I am willing to do anything if it will bring salvation and eternal glory in Christ Jesus to those God has chosen. This is a true saying. If we die with him, he will also live with him. If we endure hardship, we will reign with him. If we deny him, he will deny us. If we are unfaithful, God remains faithful. For he cannot die, deny himself. Our God is a unfaith faithful God. Though we are unfaithful, he is still faithful to us. Jesus will remain by our side even when we have endured so much that we seem to have no faith left. We may be faithless at times, but Jesus remains faithful to his promises to be with us always, even to the end of the world. Matthew 20, 20. Since Jesus is faithful to us, even if we are not, Shouldn't we be faithful to others, even in their unfaithfulness to us? We are the vessel of God's faithfulness. And people around us must see the life of Christ in us. We, as Christians, must be the example so that we could win more others for Christ. He says, we are the light and salt of this world. Let our life be the reflection of Christ's life. Let us continue and not go weary for the work that is entrusted in us for the time is coming to an end. We are in the end times. So we have to double, double time our work And first Peter 4 said, the end of the world is coming soon. God is coming soon. Isn't that a tremendous joy for us Christians, for believers of Christ, anticipating his coming? What a glorious day it will be. I'll continue this next time that I speak, that we meet in First Peter 4. 11, one to 11, uh, 7 to 11. And I thank God for his word that we can live according to his will and guidance. Let us continue to live according to what God intends for us to do. And let's not forget to spend time with him first time in the morning. God is waiting for us every time we wake up. So we can thank him for a new life, a new day that has given to us. Let's pray. Dear God, Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. Lord, that give us your word that give us assurance 
assurance that we are your children and joint co-heirs with Christ. The assurance that there will be a time that we will be with you. That we will worship you. Unendingly and lovingly. Thank you, Father, for your word. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Okay. We now go to 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 our prayer prayer what do you call that? Well, you go to our blue bulletin. Okay. Hello everyone. Where's the book? Uh, is there anyone who could share the blessings or prayer requests?